Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's Thursday, January 30th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. It's Friday Eve, and it's going to be a cold day today. So get your fire going and get some hot chocolate. Stand by for more from our Justin Horn. Uh, headline on our top story this morning here as we uh, begin GMSA at 9. Praise over punishment helps improve students focused, according to a new study. Yeah, they uh, kind of delved in this a little bit on Good Morning America, too, but it's very interesting. It appears that dealing with children with a, a carrot wields more power than a stick, as they put it. It turns out children focus on tasks up to 30% more when teachers praise them for good behavior rather than reprimand them for being disruptive. This is according to Brigham Young University. Researchers attended 151 classes at 19 elementary schools across Missouri, Tennessee, and Utah. During a three-year period, they observed just over 2,500 students from kindergarten through sixth grade. This is what they found. When kids receive praise, it activates certain feel-good chemicals in the brain. The chemicals can enhance functioning in parts of the brain that are responsible for things like focus, attention, planning, and problem solving. Not only does praise have positive effects on the brain, experts believe that punishment can actually have the opposite effects. They found that when punishment is used, it activates another part of the brain responsible for fear. And when fear responses are activated, Chemicals released actually cloud parts of the brain that are needed for focus. Now, constructive criticism isn't off the table as long as it's done right. Quote, instead of punishment, constructive criticism can be used, but it should be balanced with praise in order to create a safe environment where kids are motivated to focus, learn, and grow. And there's not a perfect ratio for how much praise and, and, and um, how much reprimand, but the higher the praise, the better the results. It suggests that praise is an important tool for teachers to help motivate students work harder, especially those who are disruptive in class or struggle academically. How about that? Let's take a look at your GMSA rundown. The World Health Organization is meeting to decide whether to declare a global health emergency due to the coronavirus outbreak. Overnight authorities in China confirm more than 7,700 cases. The U.S. Senate will resume asking another round of questions as the battle over potential witness testimony continues. It's the final day of questioning before the Senate votes to hear from witnesses. Kobe Bryant's widow is breaking her silence using Instagram to make her first comments since Sunday's helicopter crash that killed her husband and her 13-year-old daughter. Vanessa Bryant wrote there aren't enough words to describe our pain right now. An Amber Alert is in effect in Florida after a one-week-old baby boy was taken from a house where three generations of a family were found dead on Tuesday. Police say a woman drove her SUV off this parking deck and you see there the SUV was left dangling. Emergency crews had to secure the vehicle before allowing the woman to climb down a ladder. A driver says she's lucky that this wrench came flying through a windshield on the passenger side and not on the driver's side where she was. She said she thought it was a bird at first. The longest illegal border tunnel along the U.S. to Mexico border was found back in August. It starts in Tijuana and ends in an industrial area half a mile west of the Ote Mesa border entry, 4,068 feet from the border. An infant rocking chair made by Graco is being recalled because of concern that it could suffocate children. The Consumer Product Safety Commission is recalling the Graco Little Lounger rocking seat. The U.S. life expectancy has climbed for the first time in four years. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention found that life expectancy in 2018 was 78.7 .7 years, an increase of two tenths of a year. The owner of the Dallas Cowboys, Jerry Jones, is going big, like real, real big for the big game Sunday. Huge. Jones arrived in Miami for the Super Bowl with his 357 Ooh. foot yacht. Look at that. You want I want to go for a ride. I was going to say, you want an invitation. I want to go. You're not inviting yourself, but if Jerry happens to hear that Leslie Mouton wants to go, I'm all on the, the next plane right now. I'll, right? I'll be there. That's a big old boat. See if Jerry will send his jet too. Oh, yeah, I mean, what does it cost him? Nothing. <laughs> Let's go outside with live cam. On your Thursday, it's another cold start to more January like out there. Kind of dreary looking as we look back towards our downtown area. Yeah, cloudy, cold, maybe some drizzle, maybe some rain. It's not so nice out there. This is a bit of a change from what we see most of January, right? So it's it's been pretty warm. This is going to be a change today. It's jacket weather. You may need the umbrella, although I got to tell you, there's not a lot out there. We're going to see a couple of light showers right now. Temperatures are in the mid 40s, 44 degrees at the airport, 44 Honda, 36 in Rock Springs. That's one of the cool spots this morning. And everybody is seeing those cloudy skies. Dew point is at 39. And we have a north northeasterly wind at 7. So that means there's also a wind chill. Feels like it's in the 30s 
right now as you step outside. Let's take, take a look at the radar and you'll see there's not a lot of rain really. We've got some showers off to the north and east of San Antonio. A couple of showers down there around Victoria and a few showers along the coast. I don't expect to see a lot today, but you will see a lot of cloud cover. Look at all the clouds here on the visible satellite picture. It stays overcast. Good news here though, mold dropped, mountain cedar dropped, and they both dropped significantly. So a great looking pollen count today in the forecast calls for just a 20% chance of rain. We'll only get up to about 52 degrees. Northeast Julie winds stay in place, five to 15 miles per hour. So wind chill through much of today. It does warm up tomorrow and the weekend looks pretty dang good before we get another cold front next week. This one looks stronger. We're going to talk about that coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Checking transguide cameras and guess what? We've got proof of a little bit of shower activity here in the downtown area. There's 37 at the Alamo Dome. Transcat will help us keep an eye on things. Roads look fairly dry there at 35 and Evans. Top stories that we're following for you today. We now know the name of the man killed over the weekend during a home invasion on the west side. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office identifying him as 36-year-old Joe Adame. San Antonio police say four suspects went into the victim's home in the 100 block of Hidalgo Lane around 1130 Saturday night. Investigators believe they were trying to rob that home. Police say during the home invasion, Adame was shot in the leg. Well, the bullet hit a major artery that caused him to lose a lot of blood and ultimately die. At last check, no arrests have been made in that case. The man accused of beating his 76 year old mother to death in her Balcones Heights apartments or apartment rather is now behind bars. 55 year old Michael Wayne Curbo was arrested late last night. He was charged with murder. It happened Tuesday night at the Spanish Keys apartment in the 1100 block of Babcock. Police received a call from a, the victim asking officers to help her kick Curbo out of her apartment. But when officers arrived, he had already left. Police later received another call from Curbo's friend asking for a welfare check on his mother. Officers found the victim badly beaten. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Her name has not yet been released. Kerbo is being held at the Bear County Jail on a $200,000 bond. The punishment phase in the trial of the so-called medical center rapist is set to begin this morning. Jury found Anton Harris guilty on two counts, aggravated sexual assault and an aggravated robbery. Harris indicted in five rape cases in the medical center area here in San Antonio. He was on trial for the latest one, the May 2017 rape of a nurse. The jury spent about five hours deliberating yesterday before coming up with a guilty verdict. He is facing a maximum sentence of life in prison. Just a reminder, the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive happening this Saturday. Still plenty of time to get tickets to the KSAC Corral. Each ticket comes with breakfast, seats for the parade, and many other activities for the whole family to enjoy. The Cattle Drive once again is Saturday, February 1st, 9 in the morning until 1 in the afternoon. For tickets, head over to ksat.com slash insider. Moving on to your morning headlines now, a portion of the border wall is now leaning on a few trees and we have video of a high rise fire rescue and a, another nightmare situation for parents of bus riders and a Girl Scout going national selling cookies. David Sears joins us this morning. Hi, David. Morning. Thick, thin nits. Oh, thin I love thin nits. nits. OK, yeah, we thin, mint, uh, thin mints are probably one of the most popular Girl Scout cookies in the history of ever of ever. I, I got a new lemon delicious. flavor cookie this year. Do they? So yeah, and wait till you hear that's just one young lady selling her Girl Scout cookies. Pretty good. Several panels on the wall being built. The U.S.-Mexico border now leaning on trees on the Mexican side. High winds blew them over. Border Patrol and Customs Agent Carlos Batonas told CNN the panels had just been set in concrete. The concrete didn't have time to cure before the winds gusting at nearly 40 miles an hour got to them. And then they started leaning over. There's about 130 feet of leaning panels. The panels are improving existing sections of a portion of the wall along the border in California. And those are flames shooting out of a high rise apartment right here. And this is a man on the ledge trying to get away from those flames. Talk about a scary moment. Now this all happening on the sixth floor of this apartment high rise. The video from inside a building across the street. You can see the man slowly creeping across the ledge trying to get away from those flames while firefighters attempt to get him to ladder truck and get him down. People on the ground and those firefighters yelling at the man not to jump. And as you can see there, he eventually was rescued. You could see almost like this fire creeping up behind him and he kept on inching and like shimming his way out of the window like 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 looked like Spider-Man. It was truly cinematic in the worst kind of way. Well, in the movie, it was real life and he wasn't the only one rescued. A helicopter with more rescuers were able to get people off the roof of that building. 
while others were rescued from a stairwell. 300 firefighters were on scene at the time. They saved people and got the fire out in just about an hour. And more scary pictures. That is a school bus on fire. And this is in Houston. The passengers were a special needs student in attendance. The good news, firefighters got the bus fire out quickly and there were no injuries. There were four people on board. It was the driver, the student, a nurse, and an attendant. The driver said when the blaze broke out, they were able to get the ramp down pretty quick and they got everybody off. Another bus was sent to pick them up and the school district is investigating that fire. Good news there. And it is Girl Scout cookie time, best time of year really. The young ladies are everywhere selling those delectable delights, and we do mean everywhere. You're looking at 70-year-old Rory Clark from West Virginia. She's holding a map of the U.S. to indicate where she has sold cookies. Every single state. She used social media and her own website to reach buyers across the country. She says she has sold nearly 700 boxes wow. Of cookies. I'm scared of her in the future. There's apparently a project that they were doing in school. It was like try to get a postcard from each state. So right. she took it a couple of steps further, said I'll sure, get yeah. money from each state and from people in this state. And they buy my entrepreneur cookies. going on there. 700 boxes of cookies. It's nothing that, thin about that. No, nothing thin about that. Ooh, it is cookie time. time. I like that. Thank you, David. 909, 44 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. How are your New Year's resolutions coming along, Mark? If the answer is not so good, maybe it's time to try something new. How setting micro resolutions may be a better option. And a little later on, we'll get the latest on suspected coronavirus cases here in Texas. It's in our Tribune Thursday report. So you answer the call to come donate whole blood, but have you ever stopped and thought what actually happens to the blood? Well, in honor of Blood Donor Month, University Hospital is opening their doors to their processing center and giving us a backstage look to what happens to the blood this morning on GMSA at 9. We're also talking Spurs coming up, but right now the market is down about uh, two points at 28,732. During a single visit, a blood donor gives a little more than a pint of blood. But did you know that blood has an expiration date? It's National Blood Donor Month, and I'll see about it. I visited our KSAC community partners at University Hospital to learn more about what happens to blood after it's donated. Throughout the years, thousands of volunteer blood donors have sat in these chairs in the blood donor room at University Hospital. Of the people that can donate, um, only about 37% of the eligible donors in the, in the United States actually do donate. A few sponge ball squeezes and minutes later, this whole unit is filled with blood that will eventually make it to a patient in need. It's warm. Um, so this, this just was collected from him. This is a, a bag of, of whole blood that has a little bit of preservative in it already. Next, the blood donated is taken to the processing center down the hall. We have to go through a number of steps, various steps to prepare the blood to be separated out into its components. So in this case, it'll be red blood cells and plasma. And the red blood cells have to be stored at a particular temperature. Plasma has to be prepared in a particular way and frozen within a particular time. The blood can be spun. So we have these, these centrifuges here, and uh, they basically they'll spin the blood and, and separate it out by the heavier components on the bottom, the red blood cells, and the liquid part on the top, the plasma. It can also be squeezed. We we'll have expressors that then will separate them out physically between the red blood cells and the plasma into their different component bag types that, that are on there. And eventually frozen. Plasma gets frozen, so there's freezers that are in here as well. The red blood cells get stored in here pending, as you, as you noted, you know, infectious disease testing. Once the results are made known, the packets are labeled and sent to the blood bank, but it has to be used quickly. The red blood cells will, will put into a particular preservative that will give it 42 days of a shelf life. The plasma, it will be separated out and it will be frozen, and as a frozen product, it's got a year uh, shelf life. Dr. Daniel What's says although they're able to sustain almost half of the blood needed within the center itself, there's still a big need for donors in order to continue to save lives. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Our KSAT Community Blood Drive is uh, continuing. You can stop by University Hospital at any point to donate. Donor room open until 5 today and tomorrow. For more information, visit the community section of our website at KSAT.com. Very interesting story. Yeah, yeah, I always kind of wonder what happens now. I've done my part. What, yeah, what's what next? Yeah. That's a process. That is interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, good day to stay inside. Yeah, it's cold. It's a little drizzly in spots. We saw that on some of the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the cameras there. Let's take a look at rain chances today because I don't think they're all that great. We're going to bring in our uh, 
little panel here to show you okay. what rain chances look like. I think I'm probably 20% at best. Uh, we had it at 30% a little bit earlier this week, but I think uh, it's, it remains pretty low today. And even down the line, we're not seeing great rain chances. So our drought conditions probably going to stick with us uh, going forward. Uh, as far as uh, the radar, it's pretty quiet. We're mm -hmm. seeing a couple showers out there. And uh, most of these are moving off to the east and northeast. And, and so uh, the radar, I just, I just don't think it'll be very busy today. We will still see some of that drizzle. Maybe a couple of light showers pop up. But uh, nothing of great significance. And so let's zoom in here on Bear County. A couple of light returns there. We've seen some of the sprinkles on the... Uh, city cam, uh, but that's just about it. Let's go outside for you and show you what we're seeing on live cam. 44, dew point is at 39. North northeasterly winds at about 7. That puts the wind chill at 40, so it is going to feel a little bit chillier with that wind in place. And as we look at the satellite picture, look at all the clouds. Pretty expansive here. We're going to see cloud cover through all of today. It'll continue into tomorrow morning and then probably break up a little bit tomorrow. We will see some sun on your Friday afternoon and the weekend's looking pretty good, by the way. So there is silver lining here, but 46 in Austin, 38 right now, Fredericksburg, 36 Rock Springs, 43 in Uvalde. And this time of year, once you get this cloud deck, it's really hard for these temperatures to warm up. So we're not going to see a huge warm up today, probably low 50s for highs. And we're in the mid 40s here in San Antonio right now, again, with that wind chill in the low 40s. Feels like 35 in Kerrville, 30 in Rock Springs, 37 in Uvalde. Uh, so the wind chills uh, a little bit lower there in the hill country. Here's the setup. We have an upper level low, which is sitting over Mexico right now, more of a southwesterly flow aloft. So you get some of that overrunning that we often talk about, and that just keeps the clouds in place. Sometimes it can get you a few showers if we get a little disturbance rolling through. But again, we're just not seeing much of that. And all of Texas is seeing this colder air. 37 right now, Wichita Falls, 29 in Amarillo. Warm spot as it typically is, 62 down there in Brownsville. So our forecast going forward, we'll get the clouds all day long today. Uh, overnight, there could be some slightly heavier showers uh, down along the coast, Beeville down to Corpus. There could be some more significant rain but that quickly moves off to the east. And by tomorrow morning, probably still mostly cloudy, but by tomorrow afternoon, the sun is back and temperatures warm up. We'll see that again on Saturday too. As we look down the line, a little interesting here because next week, we'll fast forward here to Monday, we're looking at some pretty warm temperatures, probably mid 70s, but we actually do have what looks like a pretty significant cold front headed our way, maybe midweek next week. This is going to drop temperatures maybe into the 40s for highs, so that'll be something to watch. Again, middle part of next week into the end of next week. We have some time. We'll see how it pans out. 52 degrees for the high temperature today. 20% chance of a shower or two, as we mentioned. And then 60 tomorrow uh, with some morning clouds and then clearing. 68 Saturday, partly cloudy. Sunday, mostly cloudy for Super Bowl and Groundhog Day. 70 and then mid-70s Monday and Tuesday before that next big front moves in. And this one does look pretty significant. We're going 49 right now on Wednesday for high. Wow, okay. Wowza. We'll see. Uh, the, the models have been showing some of these fronts off and on for basically all of winter, and they haven't really panned out. But the models are kind of sticking with this one, so we'll see. We'll so see Mother Nature goes, hey, it's February. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, slap yeah. you right in the face. 919 yeah. right now on your Thursday morning. Still having GMS at 9. Have you given up on your New Year's resolution yet? If so, you may want to try micro resolutions instead. We have details coming up. Maybe the middle of the night, but the staff at this place says they always have loads of fun helping to air out other people's dirty laundry. The goal is for everything to come out in the wash or in the dry cleaning process. Cowboy Cleaners has been handling both for more than 40 years. Inside two buildings on the city's north side, staff members get to work in the middle of the night. They help to get clean clothes back to their customers within 24 hours or less. I spent just a couple of hours with them. I'll show you how they make the clothes make the man and woman in the latest while you were sleeping. It's on KSAT.com. 923, if you're like most of us, sticking to a resolution made at the beginning of the year may not be going very well. So how about starting with something new? CNN's Mandy Gaither has more in today's Health Minute. 
It's estimated that 80% of New Year's resolutions fail by the second week of February. If you're one of the many not meeting your goals, don't give up. You might be able to reach them a new way. Instead of having a year-long resolution, try making micro-resolutions. Set a self-improvement goal and commit to it for four weeks so the task doesn't feel so daunting. Each month, you could choose something new to focus on. For example, if being healthier is your goal, maybe focus on physical health for one month. The next, hone in on mental health. You could give up a bad habit for a month, like drinking alcohol or smoking. The next four weeks, try hard to get proper sleep. Push yourself to try something new like meditation. Then focus on whole foods and eating lots of fruits and veggies. How about striving to write or read more? You might find these small resolutions lead to something big. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Makes miraculous sense, doesn't it? I need to resolve myself to take more naps. Yeah, so mm -hmm. get more rest in the 30 days? Yeah, I think I need to do that. All right, we'll check back with you uh, towards the end of February. Deal. Right now, it's 925, 44 degrees. Big victory for our Spurs last night. Silver and Black snapping a three-game losing streak, beating the Utah Jazz. David and RJ are here to break it all down. We now know how many coronavirus cases are active here in the Lone Star State. That's next in our Tribune Thursday report. And as we head to break, a check of the road. 1604 at Valley Meadow, no problems there. 35 at Ben's Ingram and looking pretty good, too. There have been a handful of suspected coronavirus cases reported here in Texas. And a congresswoman from Houston has had a starring role in the impeachment proceedings in the U.S. Senate. Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune joins us for our Tribune Thursday report. Good morning, Alana. Good morning. All right, let's start. Texas officials say all four suspected coronavirus cases tested negative. And while so far there have been no confirmed cases, health officials aren't taking chances. So the Tribune has been following developments at a state level. What's the latest? Yeah, well, we know uh, the CDC has chosen the DFW airport among the 20 airports in the country that will be screening for this virus. We also know of those four uh, cases that tested negative. Two of them were students, uh, Baylor University, Texas A&M University. But here in Austin, the University of Texas at Austin um, isn't taking any chances. And yesterday, its global program issued a memo outlining that it would be banning all undergrad travel as for graduate students, faculty, staff. Their travel would need to be deemed essential to be even considered for approval. And then if they do get to go, they'll have to sign terms uh, in order to come back on campus. Mm. Uh, shifting gears, the special election for a Houston area state house seat this week garnered national attention. Democrats had hoped yeah. the race would build momentum in their push to take control of the House in November. But Republican Gary Gates handily beat his Democratic arrival. What are the takeaways? Yeah, 16 points, uh, no small uh, uh, victory there. But yeah, the, the takeaways are the fact that this was an expected loss for Democrats, but you never would have guessed it, considering how much money and resources uh, the party, uh, Beto O'Rourke, uh, some of the Democratic presidential hopefuls, uh, you know, endorsing in this race, uh, put into it. And so the expected loss turned into a devastating and embarrassing loss for the Democrats. Uh, shortly after uh, the Republicans' victory, the Democratic State Party said, look, you know, we actually have 12 other seats in the House that are higher priority than this one. Uh, so, you know, and it was really important, too. A lot of money in this race, $2 million between the two candidates, and it only gets Gary Gates to November uh, to finish out John or Wass's term. So again in November, providing Gates makes it past his primary, uh, him and uh, Markowitz, the Democrat, will be on the ballot again. Wow. Okay. Well, let's move on to U.S. Representative Sylvia Garcia, freshman Democrat out of Houston. She has landed a starring yeah. role in the Senate trial of President Trump. So if I understand right, Democratic House leaders from across the country intensely lobbied Speaker Nancy Pelosi to be among the House impeachment managers. Garcia, though, told reporters she wasn't among those begging to be picked. So how did she get the post? Yeah, and those reporters were um, among them are Democratic or 
DC rather, uh, bureau chief Abby Livingston, who said no, actually Pelosi came up to her and said, why haven't you been among those asking for, you know, to be one of these coveted, you know, house managers in this trial? And she said, look, if I'm, if I'm called upon, I'll be ready to serve. And sure enough, uh, Pelosi asked her uh, to do so. Garcia, of course, is only a freshman, but she made, uh, you know, news and history coming in as one of two of Texas's first Latinas to serve in Congress uh, out of the 2018 elections and, uh, you know, talking to a lot of people in the Harris County area where she's from, where she served as a prosecutor. Uh, they describe her as kind of having a quiet competence, that she's likely very key uh, in this process, more behind the scenes. She doesn't play into all the, the drama and bombast we've been seeing throughout this process. Well, how did she do in the trial? Well, I mean, it's still going on. But like I said, I think that she's more key behind the scenes. She, of course, is arguing uh, like the other House managers on the Senate floor. Uh, but they say, you know, her her just long history, she's 69 years old, of, of being a, a top prosecutor, uh, of course, knowing uh, the law and, and state and national uh you know, legalities that she's been key, uh, but a little more mild mannered than some of the others. And that's the latest out of Austin. Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Alana. you. All right. Live cam doing this look outside. <laughs> it's a good adjective. I, I say for today, gloomy. Blech. 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 Uh, but the sun comes back out tomorrow. You know, we haven't had a whole lot of these days so far this winter, so this is going to be one of them. Cloudy skies, maybe a little bit of rain out there, and temperatures are going to stay pretty chilly all day long. The numbers right now show us that we're in the 40s, mid-40s here in San Antonio. 39 Bernie Stage, 40 Comfort, 39 Bandera, 41 in Tarpley. And the wind chill down in the low 40s. We've even got some 30s out there, so that's your feels like number. 34 in Kerrville, 30 the wind chill right now in Rock Springs. Definitely jack and weather all day today. As far as rain goes, there's not a lot to see, but we do have a few very light returns. So a couple light showers possible, maybe a little bit of drizzle. You can see all the cloud cover. The only breaks in the clouds are down there along the Texas coast, and I'm not anticipating much uh, in the way of sun today. Cloudy skies across the board. 52 degrees, the high temperature, 20% chance of rain across the board as well. But the sun comes out tomorrow. The weekend looks great, too. We're going to detail that forecast coming up in just a couple minutes. Guys? Thank you, sir. 410 at Cherry Ridge, no problems. 281 at Hildebrand, also looking very good as of 934. Cuteness alert, cuteness alert. Ready for adorbs, here it comes. Little boy reviews Shirley Temple drinks on Instagram, and it's the cutest thing you'll see all week. All right, we all grew up with Shirley Temples, right? Right. Who knew that they could be such a, you know, a specialty, a person who really just really specializes in these things. Watch the video, and then we'll tell you about them. And I'm at Hoodoo Brown Barbecue. I wish you could smell how good it is in here. But anyways, I'm here to try their version of a Shirley Temple. And as you can see, there's cherries on the outside and inside. And there's an American flag, USA. So anyway, I'm going to try their version of Shirley Temple. There's the inside cherries on the outside. Flag decoration. There's really nothing to say because it's just a great Shirley Temple. I'll make it a 9.5. A 9.5 from the Shirley Temple King himself. Did he say his name is Max? Well, nobody knows his name. I heard something off the top, something like that. Is this David Elder's kid? He seems like he should be on Texas Eats. Oh, no kidding. Or Texas Drinks. He can have his own show, right? Texas right. Drinks. All right, so each video has the Shirley Temple King at a different restaurant trying his version of the drink. Now, he goes into, like, exactly why a drink should shine. OK, and there are certain things he's you know, he's got criteria here right. as, he's, as he's judging all of these things. He says that, first of all, you have to have a cherry in it. That's the number one thing. Right. If it doesn't have a cherry in it, you're losing, cherry. You're, you're losing some points right, right. there. Actual right. cherries have to be in there to get a score of six or higher. OK. Other criteria, the size of the drink, the flavor of the grenadine and extra pizzazz like in this one, the mini American flag or umbrella <laughs> that will get you some bonus points. If you forgot, uh, Shirley Temple, of course, is lemon lime soda with uh, a dash of cherry flavored grenadine and then the cherry on top. Now, he had 600 followers when it first started. It's more. 20,000 and climbing. He's really darn cute. He is so cute. He's got so much personality. So anyway, look up the Shirley Temple King if you want to follow him and follow all of his reviews of Shirley Temple's.
Let's take a look at the time right now. Six, uh, 936, 44 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Go Spurs, go. Two days after missing a critical free throw, DeMar DeRozan stepped to the line and put the game away for the silver and black. David does not need his soapbox. He's back with RJ with highlights coming up next. And we're adding stocks back in here, and uh, all of a sudden we're taking another dive. We're down 127 points at 28,608. We do need your soapbox. Uh, no, 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 we're not getting that. <laughs> David and RJ here. <laughs> Just complaining about the referees and how many fouls they called last Yeah, exactly. see, we didn't see the game, and Justin yeah. was saying there may have been uh, some problems with the fishing last night. We'll get to well, that. Yeah. Let's talk about That's the good stuff first. Let's good news. Good. Yeah. We got to win. So, can you spell victory? Ooh. V I C T O R Y. <laughs> So, Whoa! Oh, that's good. <laughs> Ford. Okay. Um, I was never a cheerleader. I was just having fun. Right. You're good there, though. You helped yeah, them out because they won. We were like excited. We were just sitting there waiting for it all just to collapse. And yeah. It never did. Um, an another. Wait, got we waiting for it to collapse? Because it has the rest of the attitude. season, but you know, that's great stuff. But it did. It, was fantastic. But it did. It did. It did. And it's just another example of how um, how confusing this team could be. I mean, they play really good against the, some of the best teams against the league, and then really bad against the uh, the bad teams. So uh, again, taking on a really good. Uh, Utah team. So last give us, night. give us the, the bright spots, the highlights. Actually, the Spurs were down 10-6 in the first quarter, and they went on like a 17 to five run, and they mm -hmm. never looked back. The closest Utah ever got was five several times in the fourth quarter. But San Antonio actually played offense, and they played defense, mm -hmm. and they were able to inbound the, the ball, ball when they what? needed to. Yeah, I know. It was, it was like, <laughs> wow, they did it all. They must have been listening game. to you on your soapbox. I, well, uh, they had I to doubt it, <laughs> but yeah, they weren't up that early. <laughs> but but or, they, uh, and that guy right there, DeMar DeRozan, is unbelievable. How many points? 38? Yeah. 38 yeah. last night. Uh, wow. Season high, 38 points for DeMar. This comes after uh, 36 points against the Bulls the other night. So uh, DeMar has been playing great. And, uh, yeah, just an overall team effort. Uh, we talked about DeJounte Murray not having a great game against Chicago. Yeah, that was your points. soapbox. Yeah, that was my <laughs> thing. So DeJounte obviously listening to us. Yeah, uh, yeah. 16 points, three steals yesterday. So. And you know who else? Patty Mills has been playing pretty good lately as well because last night he ended up with uh, 18 points. So they got some help. That's great. I mean, it wasn't all tomorrow. Did we hear from Pop? Was and, he happy? Uh, yeah, but we don't have Pop today because he was like normal. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't, he didn't go like, oh, yeah, nothing, nothing just, like, you know, it was his so, there's Pop so. happy, there's Pop sad, yeah, he there's was, Pop It was mad. his birthday, so, you know, he was in good mood. Yep. That's true, that's right. However, uh -oh. we do hear from DeMar and Rudy on, they actually played consistent here. Maybe we're playing down to our, our competition, um, but with respect to the, you know, these teams in the NBA, everybody, you know, everybody's a pro and everybody can and play basketball. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, we came out here and beat a really good team. And, um, you know, that just shows the kind of team we can be. It was tough. You know, we buckled down. You know, we executed when we need to, got stops when we need to, and got buckets when we need to. Yeah, yeah. they hit free throws when they needed to. Yeah. Yeah, speaking Rudy of free with throws. With the fashion, I, yeah. I got to say, Rudy looked good, good, huh? <laughs> and he had on his red tennis shoes when he yeah. walked out there. Yeah. So nice he, styling. The, the beanie and the red tennis shoes all went together. What's up with Utah's uniforms but, but, last yeah, night? Those like, are they, weird. They don't look like jazz uniforms. They went to the line 40 Six times. Okay. So now is that because of the officiating or because of the? I just, I the guess the officiating hadn't called yeah. enough fouls yeah. for the month of January. They said, well, I'll make up. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we were talking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we were talking about uh, Demar Derozan uh, today. Later on tonight, they're going to make the announcement for the All Star, uh, the reserves for uh, both conferences. And uh, if the Spurs do not get a player in, it'll snap a streak of 22 straight seasons. Well, that would be sad. Demar would is kind of on the cusp of that. So, um, so fingers crossed. He's been great. Yep. He's been he's been great uh, for the past couple of weeks. Actually, uh, averaging 27 points a game. I mean, it's really been uh, solid. What does this win do for the standings? Anything? Nothing. 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 That was that was. You really? Looked, you looked at the standings this morning. I was like, wow, they beat the Utah Jazz and, and got nothing? nothing. Got nothing for it. So, hmm. No. Memphis, yeah. uh, Memphis, Memphis is one four, like, four straight. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. So okay. we're gonna hear from Demar. Yeah. Actually, okay. so we asked Demar after yeah. the game. Do you think uh, whether he should be an All Star? I'd be cocky, but you can line up any single player that's oh, make the all-star team. And, you know, I, we go in the backyard, you know, that's how I look at it, you know, but I don't base my career off all-star games anymore. It's definitely an honor.
Now, who wants to go in the backyard on the on that hoop with the chain on it with with the Marta Rosa? I do. Okay, and you know, yeah. we'll show you why he's um, be an all star. Have somebody, yeah. have somebody yeah. record it. <laughs> yeah. Please, can we see that. Can I just play horse with him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, you if you want, and if you've been watching him the last the last two or three weeks, I mean, when he started, you know, he had like that eleven straight twenty, and then just kept going, and then he had the thirty plus the last two nights. I mean, he's got he's got some he's got some moves. He, he can hit that fadeaway jumper, and he can be double teamed to get. I mean, he's just he's just he's an talented. All mm -hmm. All right, awesome so, player. So countdown rodeo road trip around the corner. Yeah. Got a few Ooh. more games to squeeze in here, right, RJ? Charlotte uh, on Saturday. Charlotte Saturday, mm -hmm. and then they hit out eight game road trip. So okay. uh, pretty tough. Starting off with both LA teams, which is going to be a very yeah. tall task yeah. for right. them for sure. They got Oklahoma yeah. City twice. Mm -hmm. How do you? I don't know how that works. I don't know. We don't like, do the schedule. How many times can you go to Oklahoma City in, in one stretch? Yeah, what, is, Oklahoma what is City, then you go to another city, then you go back to Oklahoma City. Algorithm for creating the schedules. Yeah, who cares? Yeah. 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 All right, thanks, guys. Tough We're so. proud of the Spurs. Did that cheer again for us? Go Spurs. That was no, the victory cheer. <laughs> and that was victory. 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 <laughs> I don't know. Let's take a look outside the lock cam. Oh, uh, yeah. Don't worry. I won't be cheering at any Spurs games. <laughs> That's well done, Leslie, first of all. It was good. DeMar is an all-star in my book. And also, Dave, you got to be careful talking about the refs, man. You're going to get a fine if you talk about them anymore. It's all good stuff. I find me. <laughs> I figured that would be your sentiment. All right, uh, let's take a look at the drought monitor. Uh, we've got uh, drought still here across South Texas. Uh, severe drought in some spots, still the extreme drought. This really has remained unchanged. And I think that... Anything we see today is not going to help us out much here because everything we're going to see is very light. So we're still in a drought. We still could use some rain. We've eaten away at this just a little bit, but not enough. So 34% of the state still in drought. The majority of that is here in South Texas. One week ago was 35%. So really not much of a change there. And we're not getting much help today. And all the shower activity that we see is very, very light. And a lot of it's starting to go away. There still could be some drizzle out there. Uh, but uh, as far as significant rainfall amounts, I just don't think it's going to happen here in San Antonio. Now, down to the south, we could see some showers tonight that may add up to maybe a quarter of an inch down to our south. Uh, there is one little shower there on the northwest side there along 1604. Otherwise, uh, things quiet here in San Antonio. Just cloudy and cold. 44 degrees. Dew point is at 39. North northeasterly winds at about 7 miles per hour. Wind chill is down there at 40. And time lapse shows that those clouds just keep rolling across and we have not seen any breaks this morning. I don't anticipate uh, really any breaks as we get towards the afternoon. 38 degrees in Kerrville, 36 Rock Springs, 43 in Uvalde, 45 in Carrizo Springs. One of our cooler days that we've seen this January. And then you got to factor in what wind is there. It's not very strong, but there's enough there to create a wind chill. 35 is what it feels like in Kerrville, 41 the current wind chill in Pleasanton. There's all the cloud cover. There are some breaks down on the coast of Victoria over to Houston, but most of us are seeing cloudy skies overcast conditions, and it's this overrunning setup that we sometimes get during the winter uh, where we get the southwesterly flow a lot, got some cool air at the surface, and the clouds just stick around all day long. Most of Texas, in fact, is seeing this cloud cover, but there's just not much precip with this. There was some frozen fog this morning up across parts of the Texas Panhandle, cold enough up there. And there's our area of low pressure that's helping to create some of this. It'll be moving through, and by tomorrow, it's out of here. We're getting sun back in the forecast, and we'll see some sun over the weekend, too. Futurecast looks like this. A couple showers through the day. A little more significant rainfall along the coast overnight tonight. That moves off to the east, and then we'll start off with some cloud cover tomorrow and then go to partly cloudy skies probably by tomorrow afternoon, which means temperatures will be warmer. Down the line, you heard me talk about this earlier, we've got a stronger cold front that will probably be moving in midweek next week. So we're talking about Tuesday into Wednesday. This will be something to watch because this one looks like it could be a little bit stronger, could potentially put high temperatures in the 40s. We'll have to wait and see. We haven't seen a whole lot of this this winter, and the models haven't handled it very well, but we'll keep you posted. 52 degrees today, 20% chance of showers. And then tomorrow, 60 with decreasing clouds. 68 Saturday, partly cloudy. 70 on Sunday, mostly cloudy. Chance of showers Monday. And there is that front we were talking about. Could potentially cool us down into the 50s, maybe even 40s by Wednesday. Wow. Mixed bag. That would be a change. Thank you. Yep. 949, 44 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. We'll be right back. Hello, everyone. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. 
Nike is being investigated by the SEC over claims that the company made illicit payments to elite youth basketball players. The investigation was disclosed during the trial of Michael Avenatti, who has been charged with threatening to publicize Nike's improper payments to college basketball recruits. Meanwhile, UPS and self-driving technology company Waymo have announced a partnership to pilot autonomous vehicle package pickup in Phoenix. That's the same area where Waymo's self-driving vehicles already operate. The vehicles will take packages from UPS store locations to a UPS facility. The pilot will not deliver directly to consumers. And Apple has recently hired one of Netflix's top engineers, all in an effort to expand their newly launched TV streaming platform, as well as their subscriber count. Apple's hoping to bulk up their Apple TV offerings as competition in the streaming space continues to heat up. Apple has so far declined to comment. And that's Jetter Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Good morning. Hey guys. Coming up on live, Max Greenfield from the neighborhood is here. Plus, we continue counting down to our after Oscar show in just a little bit on live. Hey, a reminder everybody, our KSAC Community Blood Drive is going on all week. You can stop by University Hospital at any point to donate. The donor room is open until 5 o'clock today and tomorrow. For more information, visit the community section on our website, ksat.com. Here's Trench Guide, the 281 at Held Hildebrand, in and out of downtown, no problem. Same, uh, looking pretty good also, 35 and Topper Wine. The roads look dry. We're not seeing a lot of rain, really. We can see a couple of sprinkles today, maybe a shower, some drizzle. 52 the high, that's it. It'll be cloudy and cold all day long. More sun, though, tomorrow and warmer by the weekend. Your kids are going to love oh, this. Yeah, you're in trouble, buddy. Funny, I already know about it. I've already yeah. heard about it. The it's Barbie awesome. themed yeah. uh, pop up truck loaded with 90s merchandise stopping at the shops at La Cantera, Northwest Side, coming up here uh, next month. The same people behind those successful Hello Kitty Cafe truck kicked up a three-year Barbie truck totally throwback tour. As you said, it's going to be at the Barnes & Noble's Little Lock and Terror from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. on February 8th. That's going from here to Plano. Truck will offer uh, Barbie apparel and accessories price between $12 and $75, including a limited number of upcycled denim jackets with the Barbie logo pack. You have to get your girls a little denim um, jacket. You have to do it. But other items, distressed, light washed Barbie logo embroidered denim jackets, what we said. Uh, a dad cap. You can get a denim, denim dad cap for you. A dad you. cap? What does you that mean? You can get them the. Well, it has the little denim cap with Barbie on it. <laughs> See, look how cute those are. They have, also have T-shirts, a logo necklace. And they have embroidered patch sets, an enamel pin set. A cassette tape wallet, a vinyl iridescent fanny pack. Oh, you got to get yes. that one. Yes, you got to <laughs> get that one. A boombox vinyl iridescent shopper tote. Cosmetic bag. NCLA Barbie plus Ken nail enamel set duo. And a decorated cookie set purchases made by credit card only there at the Barbie pop-up truck there at the shops at La Cantera coming up. Look, that's the on that's the cap. February yeah. 8th, which is uh, Wednesday. Is oh, it really? Mm -hmm, a win oh, sorry, no, no sorry, that's not it's, right. Yes, that's right. It's uh, February 8th, which is a Saturday. Thank Saturday, you. yes. Because yeah, I, like, I thought the 7th was on. I was Friday. looking at the wrong month. So you're paying all that money for a cap that just says Barbie on the side. Yeah worth it. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Girl dad. <laughs>